Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at Tarkov's worst feature, turn rate modifiers and how to deal with them. I say worst feature because as opposed to audio, cheaters, zeroing or whatever else, this mechanic is intended and designed into the game on purpose. Turn rate modifiers have been around in EFT forever and they have just been brought to bags alongside the original armour and helmet debuffs which actually gives us some more control over our total kit turn rate which we'll come on to in a moment but first let's just understand the whole system. Alright, so we've loaded into an offline factory rate, as you can see we're here, and there are basically two types of turn rate in Tarkov. There's one, which is when you're point firing and just moving around normally. This is controlled by one sensitivity. Then the second one is when you are aiming down sights, and it does get a little bit more complicated than this, but broadly speaking, those two types of aiming are set here. So if you go into controls, you have mouse sensitivity. So if we put it up to five instead, so now my, whoa, my sensitivity is crazy. But if I aim down sights, this is just as it always is. So I haven't affected this one at all. That one's like, that one's nuts and the other one's normal. Let's go back into the settings and change it the other way around and I'll show you what that looks like. So we go down to 0 0.5 and up here, we're going to go mouse sensitivity aiming. And we're going to change that to five instead. So now when I'm just point firing and looking around or whatever, it's totally normal. And then when I right click to ADS, this one's now crazy. So I hardly have to move the mouse at all. And we just go doing you know, 360 spins and all that kind of stuff. So that's broadly how the control system is actually set. Now, what makes this slightly more complicated is that this turn speed here, actually, let's just go back into the controls. This mouse sensitivity here, this is the only one that is affected by the kit modifiers that we were just talking about. So in terms of the equipment that we're wearing, right now we've got a Ratnik on, and this has got a change in turn speed of minus 2%. We've got an ANA M2, which has got another minus 2%, and we've got a Burkhut, which doesn't do anything. So this is a very low turn rate kit overall. This is just minus 4%. Now, the bizarre thing, as I said about this, is that when you are looking around in this mode, this is where this sensitivity affects it. When you're in ADS mode, the kit doesn't actually affect it at all, which is the first very, very strange thing that we have to think about when we're looking at this turn rate speed. Secondly, when it comes to aiming down sights, let's just have a look at a few different examples. These are not always equal, which is a little bit weird. So let's say we've got the PPSH here and we have got this aimed there. What I'm going to do, and this isn't going to be super scientific, but you'll, you'll get the idea because it's a stark enough difference. I'm going to put my thumb at the edge of the mouse pad and I'm going to do a, a turn until I re basically reach the other edge of my mouse pad with the PPSH. So we're going to go all the way around and I reach the other edge. And what I do is I overshoot very slightly. I kind of end up sort of in this area. So if I go all the way back around again, back to my starting position, we get back to the door. Now, what's what's kind of weird about this is let's use the AK-101 with an LCAN. So the LCAN on a one times mode, this, if I spin all the way around, this is actually the same as the PPSH. It overshoots very slightly and I kind of end up in this area. And if I go all the way back, we end up here. But what I have brought with me is a few other different guns. Now, what you'll notice if we change over from the LCAN Spectres, for example, over to basically any of the EOTechs, either the 553 um, or this kind. We're actually going to put this on the Bastion because I just hate the way it looks on the front the front hand guards. We'll stick that on and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to take my thumb and we're going to turn, 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 turn all the way. And as you can see this time, we overshoot quite dramatically. So these EOTechs and actually pretty much all of the red dots have a slightly higher inbuilt sensitivity than regular scopes and this is very very strange and obviously this messes around with all of our muscle memory on on every every weapon or anything that we use as long as we've got different turn speeds it's just a, a complete mess so we'll show this one with the the 553 as well actually we'll just we'll even just put it at the front just to showcase so we go all the way around and this overshoots and ends up over there kind of by this pole we turn all the way around and it comes back to here um so as i said like this is the basically the same for all of the eotechs the delta point uh like most of the normal optics that we use now there's a couple of really strange things about this system which is that something like the mrs for no apparent reason actually has a different sensitivity to all of the other red dots if we spin all the way around with the mrs this thing actually ends up all the way over here i'm literally just using my mouse pad right and you can see the difference that it makes it's, it's actually incredible the the change um, so that's one reason that the MRS kind of sucks and maybe just feels weird to you because if you've ever used it, it does feel weird. It feels kind of floaty, but there's also something else about it that you just can't really explain and that might be it. Another one that is a, a culprit is the HHS. People really hate this scope, right, on this mode. And this should just be a this should be a regular one times mode. But oh, lo and behold, the sensitivity is different. If we go all the way around, it's not the same as the other EOTEX. This one also has an increased sensitivity compared to most other red dots in the game. And this is one of the reasons why people tend to use the same scopes over and over. They either use all the EOTEX, they use the Delta Point, um, they use like various like the Burris and, and things like that because they, they all feel the same. Whereas, whereas these ones don't, which is very, very strange. 
Now, when it comes to picture-in-picture -picture type scopes like the Elcan or whatever, it is a little bit more nuanced because you get like a different zoom depending on exactly how zoomed the scope is. So we know that when we whiz this one all the way around, this one overshot the door a little bit just into this normal area. So it's slightly underneath what the EOTech and the others are. But obviously, if we spin all the way back around to our starting point and we use the four times mode and I go all the way around, we only get to here. And this is just a natural thing about scopes, right? The bigger the zoom, typically the smaller the, the sensitivity because you want to be making smaller movements because each, you know, the, the scope takes up like a smaller range of angles so you don't want it to be flicking around all over the place it's just kind of like a natural thing with these scopes in general so yes the ads sensitivity is a bit of a pain and the only way to keep this the same is to use the same kinds of scopes over and over again but i think that's maybe less of a deal breaker than this point fire thing now we can't really do much about the ads stuff but with the point fire we actually can do something about this now the way that we do it is we go into our settings and we say okay well we've decided that we want to have let's say 0.5 when we're not wearing any equipment let's let's, let's just start with that just as some kind of like like basic basic controls so we say okay we want 0 0.5 and what we need to do is we need to look through all of the pieces of equipment that we've got as we said earlier this is two percent and two percent so this is a four percent change in our turn rate now the way that this works is you basically need to convert that change from four percent into you, know, you do one minus it so you get to 96 percent and then you divide your in-game sensitivity which is that 0 0.5 that we were talking about earlier by that number so for me what i would do is i'd say okay i've got a, a 0 0.5 mass sensitivity i now have a four percent overall reduction in my overall sensitivity so we're going to do uh, one minus 0 0.04 so that gets me to 96 percent or 0 0.96 and i'm going to take 0 0.5 and i divide it by 0 0.96 and that gets me to 0.52 so if i'm going to be wearing this kit i should probably have my setting at 0.52 versus being naked so playing there like this now if i then took this stuff off i then need to reset this back down to 0.5 to make it feel exactly the same and that's basically what we have to do for each kit so if you've got a you know a, a 10 percent kit you have to divide it by 90 percent you've got a 20 percent negative turn rate kit you have to divide that starting default value of the sensitivity slider by 0.8 or whatever so you can go and do that for every single loadout that you run in the game and change your sensitivity every time. So what I've got here is a little spreadsheet, of course, of the various turn rates across the armor, the helmet and the bag combinations. So if you're running, say, a Gen 4 Fault and an ACHHC helmet and a Burkut, that gets you to a minus 22% total, which comes to a modifier of 78%. And my in-game sensitivity slider is at 0.5. So if I divide that by this, that gets me to 0.64. And that's the number that I should use for this particular kit. Now, obviously, changing this every single time you change anything in your loadout is a bit of a pain in the backside. You don't really want to be doing that every time. So what I have done is that I've come up with two different profiles for sensitivity. I've only done this recently, and I've never really paid attention to this before, but I really think this is going to help me with my muscle memory. So that's why I wanted to make this video. And especially because now we have the bag, this is now more possible because we have more levers to pull to get the same sensitivity across different kits. Let's just look at the Bagari, for example. So I've actually put a couple of these presets in here, but we'll pull it through. So the Bagari rig, if I just go and find that, it should be somewhere towards this end here, Bagari rig. So that has got a 7% turn rate. Now, what I did at the bottom is I put in, this isn't the full list, but this is just a, a little sort of quick example of a few different bags and a few different helmets that have a different turn rate modifiers to allow us to kind of step up and step down these different metrics. So a Bagari with a Ratnik helmet, for example, let's go and put that in there that gets us to uh, minus seven and minus two which is minus nine total now when i was playing around with these it's a little bit of trial and error but i decided to set my heavy armor preset to 16 percent so what this means is that we now need to find a bag that has got minus seven on it to actually make this work so what you could do is you can have a, a bagari erratic and then we know that the attack two has got minus seven on it so if we just stick that into the system here then that gives you a modifier total of minus 16 percent for a sensitivity of 0 0.6 and the beautiful thing is if we step up the Ratnik, we can step one down in the bags and that gets us to the same. So here we've got a couple of different choices, which are all minus 16 for the Bagari. We've got the Bagari of Ratnik in attack two that comes to minus 16%, the Bagari, the ACHHC, and the Beta two, which comes to 16%. And on this side, we've got ones that are very close. They're either like plus or minus one. So we've got a T3 2001 and a Beta two bag. And also we've got a ULAC and a takedown bag. So this gets you to 17% and 15%, which hopefully should be okay. That, that should be enough that it's you know, not going to mess around with your sensitivity too much and you can adjust for that in raid. One irritating thing about the way that the bags have been laid out is that 4% and 5% bags are kind of missing. There is one bag, which is 5%, which is the couch bag, but it's not really usable. It's not buyable easily, right? So I, don't, I didn't want to use that just all the time. So this one is basically in terms of 
the ability to buy bags that's why I've chosen these is the ability to buy these bags combined with the ability to actually like not have them be too expensive so uh, the attack 2 and the beta obviously those are more pricey but that's simply because they're some of the only ones that actually give you these sort of higher rates which is good if you're comparing if you're combining them with like a lower helmet like a Ratnik or something for example so moving on to the current again we want to target this 16 percent so the current here if you combine this with the tc 2001 and a takedown bag that gets you to 16 percent similarly if you combine it with the ulac and day pack that also gets you to 16 percent so what i wanted to do was combine like a bunch of these together to ensure that we're always running the the same loadout with the reduced m this then has probably got one of the highest in terms of reductions now is minus 12 and you can combine that with two light things like a ratnik and a day pack to get to 16 an achc or a t20 to get to 16 or a tc 2001 and a burka to get to 16. this gives you like quite a lot of different loadouts without having to like fiddle around with the sensitivity just as long as you pick these things maybe you find it easier just to fiddle with the sensitivity slider i don't know but I think this gives you an, an alternative. Now, the one problem with this is that when you pick quite a high turn rate debuff, like minus 16, is that you kind of stop yourself from using certain certain armors. So the Gazelle, for example, it's only minus three. Do you have to really apply some like quite big debuffs to get to that minus 16? And I sort of struggled to find enough combinations of things that really worked in order to make this make sense. Because some of the bigger helmets, you're either having to use ones that are finally made only with visors or whatever. Like once you get up to a certain level of helmet and they're not really that easy to use anymore because all of the easily available ones are pretty much five percent turn speed or lower and they just aren't bags big enough or heavy enough to actually make the combination work so here we have like the, the cayman helmet plus the applique which is minus 10 percent the cayman's like fan raid only so you can't really buy this and then this is another the lshz 2 dtm plus the face shield is minus 12 which kind of helps you make up for that extra turn rate to get back to minus 16 again but again this one you can't wear a headset with it so a lot of people don't really use it and there are some other alternatives like the Pilgrim, but again, this is Finding Raid only and the ACHC. Or this one, it will actually work, which is a ULAC and an Attack 2. You can buy all of these parts. And that one is a, a close, but not quite at minus 15%. What is easier though, is if you have a second preset. So I've decided on 16, as I said, for my heavy armors. And then I've decided on 7% for my light armors. And the reason why you want, might want to do that is because a lot of the class four armors are really, really, really low on debuffs. Almost all of them are about minus two or minus 3%. Here we've just used the 6B3TM, which is a minus 2%, but there's like a ton of different armors that all have minus two. And we've got a combination of the Ratnik and the Takedown, which gets you to minus seven. ACHC again and the Day Pack, which is minus seven. 2001 TC and a, and a T20, which gets you to minus seven. And a ULUC and a Becker, which gets you to minus seven. So a minus seven total. We really just use any of these. We'll go for the 6B3TM. And then we'll just use one of these loadout presets. So a Ratnik and a takedown. So let's go and paste this takedown bag into here. I guess it's to our minus seven for a modifier of 93. A sensitivity of 0.5 as standard turns into 0.54. So for me, if I'm using these loadouts, I now only have to remember to change my sensitivity to 0.6 or 0.54, depending on whether I'm going with one of these guys or one of these guys. And this is pretty much how we, we deal with it. It's, it's up to you whether you create some presets for yourself, use some of the presets that I've got here. I'll have the spreadsheet. I'll put that link into the description so you'll be able to use that and fiddle around with it as you wish. There'll be the, the other data tabs will be in there with the turn rates for the other stuff if you want to mess around with that too. Or you can just use the calculation and calculate it each time and change your mouse sensitivity modifier every time you want to go into RAID, which I think is tedious, but it's up to you. So in conclusion, for me, turn rate changes just kind of suck because we're messing around with people's muscle memory for aiming and looking about using the mouse, which is a gamey hardware input anyway to try to simulate turning in real life using a human body. We already have movement penalties to slow you down and ergonomics debuffs to make bringing the weapon up to your eye slower, neither of which are anywhere near as off-putting as suddenly over or undershooting your target because you've changed a piece of equipment, for example. You don't get that kind of negative feedback that you would do in real life if you're wearing a piece of heavy armor and you try to turn and it resists and you sort of push against it because we're just using a mouse with like no resistance. So as far as the mouse is concerned and our hand, we have no extra feedback based upon the kit that we're using other than seeing the screen fly past when our sensitivity increases when when we take our kit off and we're playing scab for example i really don't mind movement and ergonomics debuffs at all but i really do hope that bsg have a strong think about whether these turn rates do actually make sense of the game there's a, a large number of players that really would like them to be removed and i think that the arguments for them are pretty weak because i think they're pretty bad for the game in general I kind of see what they were going for if you think about realism and the feeling of the heavier kits or whatever. But when it comes to actually playing the game, it just doesn't really help and it makes the game feel less consistent, which is really what we're on a big drive for these days to try and improve, not make worse. 
So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids.